When developing a Julia package, I strongly recommend incorporating progress bars as valuable tools to both enhance the functionality and user experience of your scientific software. Progress bars provide real-time feedback, making your package more interactive and user-friendly, especially for tasks that involve iterative processes and long computations. Including progress indicators also adds a layer of professionalism to your work, signaling to users that the package has been thoughtfully designed with usability in mind. This small addition can significantly increase user satisfaction, making your software more intuitive and polished. To illustrate the impact impact of progress bars, I'll walk you through a series of examples showing you how it can be used to add that extra layer of professionalism to your Julia package. To show you what I mean, I'll walk you through a few examples showing how to use progress bars in your Julia packages. First, open up the Julia repo and after that, hit the right square bracket to go into the package mode. Add progress meter and this package will be added to your Julia environment. You can also add other packages like distributed.jl because you are going to use distributed package for some examples. Now you should import distributed package and also progress meter package using the using keyword. Progress meter equivalent to progress bar in other programming languages is for long running operations in Julia programming language. If we want to use progress meters for tasks with a predetermined number of steps, we can use the at show progress macro. Here I am passing dt equal to 1, which represents a minimum update interval of 1 second. Then I pass 0.1 seconds to the sleep function, which is basically simulating a time consuming task or long running operation. If your operation runs so quickly, it never actually shows the progress bar or progress meter. The add show progress macro wraps a for loop comprehension at distributed for loop or map pmap reduce as long as the object being iterated over implements the length method. In addition, you can customize your progress bars and change the progress bar style. Optionally, a description string can be specified which will be prepended to the output. Also other properties can be modified through keywords. The glyphs used in the bar may be specified by passing a bar glyphs object as the keyword argument bar glyphs. The bar glyphs constructor can either take five characters as arguments or a single five character string. It is also possible to give a vector of characters that acts like a transition between the empty characters and the fully filled character. Here is an example demonstrating that. We can also have progress meters for tasks with a target threshold. Some tasks only terminate when some criterion is satisfied. For example, to achieve convergence within a specified tolerance, in such circumstances you can use the progress thresh type. And for tasks that only terminate when some non-deterministic criterion is satisfied, you will use the progress unknown type. In this example, the number of calls will be displayed uh, to next until the finish is called. Also, you can display a spinning ball symbol by passing a spinner equal to true to the progress unknown constructor. By default, the finish changes the spinner to a check mark, but you can use a different character by passing a spinner keyword to finish. For example, passing a spinner equal to cross on a failure condition. Also, you can completely customize the spinner character by passing a string or array of characters to animate as a spinner argument to the next function. To print and update information related to computation, you can use the show values keyword. Here we are displaying a dummy variable x below the progress meter and iteration counter. The data passed to show values is evaluated even if the progress bar is not updated. To avoid this actually unnecessary computation and reduce the overhead, you can alternatively pass a zero argument function as a callback to the show values keyword. You can also use the optional enabled keyword argument to conditionally disable a progress bar in cases where you want less verbose output or are using another progress bar to track progress in looping over a function that itself uses a progress bar. If you want to support the channel, just check out my other videos. As always, see you all later.